When a rich man takes a possession from a poor one, for example, a prince robs a plebeian of his beloved, an error arises in the poor man. He thinks the rich man must be utterly infamous to take from him the little that he has. But the rich man does not feel nearly so deeply the value of a single possession, because he is used to having many. Thus, he cannot transport himself into the soul of the poor man, and has not committed nearly so great an injustice as the latter supposes. Both have a false idea of one another. The injustice of the powerful, which arouses most indignation in history, is not nearly as great as it seems. The inherited sense of being a higher type of creature, with higher claims, already makes such a man fairly cold and leaves his conscience at rest. We all, indeed, lose all feeling of injustice when the difference between ourselves and other creatures is very great, and will kill a gnat, for example, without the slightest distress of conscience. Thus, it is no sign of baseness in Xerxes, whom even the Greeks depict as being outstandingly noble, when he takes a son from his father and has him dismembered because he has expressed fearful and ominous misgivings about the whole campaign they are engaged on. In this instance, the individual is disposed of like an annoying insect. He is too lowly to be allowed to go on upsetting a world ruler. Indeed, no cruel man is so cruel as he whom he has misused believes. The idea of pain is not the same thing as the suffering of it. The same applies to the unjust judge to the journalist who misleads public opinion with petty untruths. Cause and effect are in all these cases surrounded by quite different groups of thoughts and sensations, while one involuntarily presupposes that doer and sufferer think and feel the same, and in accordance with this presupposition, assess the guilt of the one by the pain of the other.